So gravity sketch is really useful for laying out scenes very, very quickly and then using those to draw over either in Photoshop or on your iPad with Procreate or something like that. So let's just lay out this scene quickly and show you how I use all sorts of different models to build a scene ready to be part of my concept art or, or illustration work. So I want to lay out a scene, um, starting with the character. So first of all, let's bring in some of the, the basics of the scene. So we'll just use uh, this guy, which is the main mannequin. Um, I'll just change him to a brighter color so you can see him for now. Uh, maybe not quite that bright. And that means now we've got the, our starting character. And I want to do, um, this is for a daily challenge. So this is going to be a giant creature um, looking down at um, another character which is going to be in the scene here. So one small, one large. This is um, going to be like a large demon character. Um, uh, Surtur, I think it's called, um, according to the challenge. And that's the guy that you'd see in, in Thor, the big guy that's on fire. So what we're going to do is build a scene that we can then draw over. Um, so this is only a reference scene. Um, and it won't take long. It, it, it doesn't. You don't need to be super accurate with this because you're just building out the scene for these characters that you're then going to um, uh, draw over as you see fit. So the, the accuracy of the individual models isn't isn't that important. So let's have a look at um, main tool we're going to use, which will be this one, which is the volume tool. Click on it twice, and you've got. Um, planar switched on and that means we can draw large planes obviously so if you half depress with your non-dominant trigger you can set the alignment so if I want it to be uh, directly looking down Y just half depress until the, 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 the light comes on there we go so he's level within the scene if you want to check that you can go back up here and put on um, stage floor so you can see there you know I wasn't accurate there so it needs to be like that. So that gives us something to draw on. And I'm going to just lay out a, a basic floor because that's that's the kind of frame that I want to use. I want to have them sitting within that and that's going to be some kind of a rocky valley or a, or a lava filled valley. Um, so that's how I'm going to build the volumes is using that exact tool. So I'm going to start here at the back. If we think that the camera um, if I just keep this, if I think that the camera is always going to be roughly here, looking down here, that's what I'm aiming at, something like that. So realistically I want to have um, over the shoulder of this guy looking down to this guy like so, something like that. So that will, I'll move that out of the way. So that means I'm going to put a lot of scenery in the background. So let's build up some scenery behind him and we'll keep this same plane on. Um, get the right tool back on so planar again keeping the plane on and we'll just build a let's just do it around here we need to move this plane down a bit so we've got a second plane and this would be like a craggy rocky back wall um, so it's not I'm not taking any amount of time certainly not on the back where it doesn't matter and grab it and hit the uh, blue button and that allows us to then drag it up so if I want some height out of that one piece that's how I would do it so the bottom of it looks fine let's hit the blue button again get rid of that and then I'll draw another piece I'll actually do it out here at the front and then I can see what I'm doing so this is a secondary piece and I'm not going to go level with any of these now I'm going to just t take them as I, as I um, as I make them, I'm going to use them and place them. Um, so I'm not really looking for any accuracy in the in the leveling now. So if I want to use that over and over again, I just simply fire it with my dominant hand, and that gives me the ability just to copy it and, put, and basically copy and paste. And that gives us the start of the back wall straight away. So let's make a few more of them. I'm going to make it really craggy this one. And this one will be a lot smaller, like so. 
And that'll give us a bit more, you know, that'll give us a bit more shadows and a bit more visual interest as we as we come round to, to this part. Just moving each part. Again, I'm not I'm thinking of it from here, but we can easily change this. So if I wanted to change it, I can just hit the blue button and then just change the points. That's one of the great things about having um, using um, uh, this nerves based um, geometry. So let's do a front wall here. So this will be what he steps onto, maybe. A bit bigger. We'll bring that up like so. around here I can duplicate that one because it's quite a solid block I can use that quite a lot bring that around here again you're not looking for accuracy so we're not sculpting this as such we're just putting down what we want and placing it where we want it now as you come to the back here you probably want a bit more um, detail um, simply because this is going to be what would be the, the the top of the of the of the ravine and then into um, what I'm going to describe as the rocks and the mountains at the back, maybe. So if we go back to the same tool, but we just turn off planar and we'll just make some shapes um, up here. We, in fact, I didn't go off, did it? So click on it and turn off planar completely. And now I just want some shapes like this. And these are representative of the of the mountains in the background, really. So boulders, large flat boulders. Um, kind of peaks and troughs and uh, again it really doesn't matter because it's just visual interest um, just trying to break up the background a little bit this this probably won't be in any way accurate um, in terms of what the final looks like but it give, if you look from where the camera angle is that's just building us something up in the in that back area there so we'll keep it all the rocks going one way that would be that would be useful and it will cast a few shadows which might help us pick up a bit of detail now I want there to be a tunnel down here so I can pop a bit of light through it so I'm going to be a bit careful around there in fact I will go back to planar for that so I want to build and I'll put the half depressed just put the plane around there so now we can have it like this Again, you're just making the shapes that you think you want um, without any great amount of thought, really. So if I have it like that, and then do another one, I'll spin it round back to front like that. Do another one down here. I'm making really random shapes now. So this one will be like this and that gives me something going off into the distance so that's another one done uh, you might not really see that much of that back one in the in the final um, it might it just you know it, it might just be a tiny tiny bit of it but at least if we've got it there then it it uh, it might cast a bit of shadow as well which is also the you know the important thing is that we want we want if we're asking for visual interest then there's going to be a lot of you know we need a lot of interesting little shapes coming in the shadows which again hopefully you'll be able to see in a moment now we're coming around to the front now so again I'm going to just build up something here that you won't really see but it just helps me visualize the scene um, I'm going to put these here, and then this would be the end of the valley here. And then now I need some something for him to. He's on a on a like a, an outcrop of rock. There you go. You can see what I was, I was aiming for there. It's kind of a you know a craggy outcrop with you know lots definitely lots of light casting and you know little breaks in the rock underneath. You can go, you, you could import, um, I'm going to in a minute, I'm going to import some objects. So you could import rocks, low polygon rocks that you've made in ZBrush or Blender or 
any program that you, you, you like really that creates geometry. Um, but if you're only using it as reference, I don't see the point of that. Uh, I'm going to do a background ref, like a like a, um, a mountain range in the background. So this this will be really far in the distance. So this would only be used as a uh, well, it probably won't be used at all. But I'm just covering my back a little bit to make sure I've got something in the background. You can see what I mean by that, like that. So that would be way way off into the into the distance now. Um, and may not again may not even be sh be, be shown in, in in any way but it's when you're messing around with the camera angles later it might be good to be able to see some of those um, way off in the distance we could even um, at this point we could make them light gray so you don't even see them in the in the screenshots that that much so let's let's just do a few and we'll see what they look like you can see there from that camera angle it does look quite okay you know it can you know we're going to zoom right in with this one so now a little bit more of we'll take this rock again and we'll do it as if this is splintered and fallen a bit so we need some definitely need something in the front here to to, to show a bit of more well, maybe more craggy outcrops and things like that the edge of this front line is, is quite important you can see th those shapes give us some nice shadows already with that we haven't even messed with the lighting yet but that does give us that kind of a like a shale effect as if it's the rocks have fallen and become cracked in in front of the of the character um, let's take this and bring it right down in front of him like this and that should give me a nice effect and then turn it around and do it again now let me just move the light in for a moment. I'll show you what I mean by how, how that's going to affect it. So if that's you know the lighting's quite rudimentary in, in Gravity Sketch, but you know you can see already we're getting some nice shadows and some nice shapes, and that's before we've even chosen the scene that we want. So you can go to a really dark scene. You can go to a HDRI, um, and now you're getting really deep dark shadows. So if we were to screenshot that, then that would really have an impact. can see there they you know they draw, we, before we even put the character in that's making a big a big difference to the scene look at the shadows there now so that that instantly gives us some confidence that we've gone the right way already so we'll leave that as it is for now and we'll have a look at the character so this guy probably needs to be a bit bigger and I'm thinking now that I've done that the floor needs to maybe be a bit lower so I'm thinking of that as being some kind of a lava flow so if he if I hit the blue button I can now edit him um, and we can edit his, you know, his pose a little bit. You can't get full. Um, it, it, it's not the most articulate uh, character that you, you'll ever work with, but you can get, you know, quite far. And if you flick with your thumb on your um, dominant hand, you can then rotate the joints as well. So you pretty much, with a with a little bit of tweaking, you'll be able to get the pose that you want. So I want him stepping out of this ravine, really. Now the head. I don't need and I'll show you why I can't delete it unfortunately um, but what you can do is if you pop it um, it's a bit tricky with this one if you pop it inside like this that effectively removes it from from the scene and that's all I need to do for now because I'm going to put a head that I'm going to import in so I want him reaching out the hand to this uh, um, what I'm going to call the protagonist over here let me just change the tool so we don't have that in the in the scene. I'll move the light while I'm working. Okay, so we'll have him again a bit bigger. Let's move that leg. We'll rotate this leg around, and I'll have that leg. That'll be the leg that's taking the weight as he's climbing out of the of the 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 pit, so to speak. And this one needs to come forward because I need him to be uh, stepping up and then toe down as if he's, he's just literally about to step up. Um, you can of course now move the scene around to suit the, the, the character. So if you want his foot coming up onto a step then just put that there. If that works for, keep remembering, let's change the colour of that where we're going to use the camera from. We're, we're looking from here aren't we, something like this. So that's kind of the framing I'm looking for. 
if not a bit further back. But we're going to try all that in, in, in a few minutes, so I'm not, not too worried about that yet. Um, let's bring this arm around and let's have him uh, maybe stabilising himself as, he, as he's climbing out of the pit. Maybe he needs to put his arm on another outcrop just to give us, you know, to give him some something to grasp onto, I suppose. So let's uh, spin him round a bit. We'll go in and we'll individually tweak those fingers in a moment. Um, but say he's like that. So he's, he's using that as a step up. Now, he's not a very interesting character because he's just a reference uh, mannequin. So let's give him a head. So let's go and find a head that we've got that we can use. Um, and I've got one that I made in Nomad, um, which is on the iPad. We'll use that and then we'll we'll add that head in. So we've got a file that we can pull in from here, which is import models. And we made it in there we go, so to, we made it from a Balrog model that we made. Um, and it's basically just a horned head. Um, so it suits this piece completely because it's supposed to be like a lava demon of some kind. Now that was made on an iPad, sculpted, um, I think we've got the video somewhere, I'll probably have a look at that and see if I can put a link for you. Um, and then what we did was we decimated it, which is either, you can either decimate it in ZBrush or Blender if you've got Blender. Um, and I just did a video last week about how to decimate models down, and this is this is one of the, the use cases that I would say where it's really useful, because you don't want to be putting high polygon models in here. Um, so decimate it right down to like you know ten or twenty thousand polygons. It can handle no problem, and then that would that would solve that problem straight away. It just means it comes in nice and clean. And as you can see, you don't even need to be accurate around the back because this is a reference paint over. We're not even going to use it other than you know for, to locate the things that we're we're, we're doing. Um, and that that pretty much there will give you the, the you know the, the 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 look that you want. Um, this is a, it's not that useful for the scale that we've built in here, but this is a, a way to do um, a first person view. Um, it's great for cars, you just basically hold your grip and then fire with your non-dominant hand and you, and you get that ability to spin around your model. It's good if you've built it at the right scale, um, which this one isn't. So let's just do this character now and let's let's put him at least into some sort of uh, pose that allows us to to then add some um, some um, accessories to him. So we'll have him standing on here. This leg will be forward, I think, and this one back. Spin him round like this. Spin his body round a bit, and have him looking up, and then a staff in his hand of some kind, and then maybe this hand just hidden around here. Something along those lines, really. Um, and then to add a staff or to add something, I'm not going to add any detail to him other than uh, maybe one item. So I'll take this, which is the basic capsule, blue button, and then just extend it up and in. That gives us a staff of some sort. And then put that in his hand and he's holding it out towards the, the creature now. And then just change his hand to rotate it like so. It just gives him some sort of, uh, as if he's doing something, to, you know, towards the creature. Maybe extend it out a bit more, like he's firing a spell or, or casting a spell or something like that. Now you can see it there now, it, just as it points out like that. That's cool. So now I'm going to start thinking about the the, the the framing of it all, and it's not right. I already can see that I've made mistakes. So what I can do is with push forward on my dominant hand. And I could just move this entire block as I need to, to. To you know, I might want to just leave that bit out. So maybe something like that. Let's just see if I can get it right. Like, let's get. I don't want to go too far. Yeah, can't can't do without the protagonist, can we? So let's move him uh, above that. So now I'm thinking already, it's only a few minutes in, but I'm already thinking now that I need to be adding in some the 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 framing by using the camera. So we, we, we need to 
Um, I'm just adding in a few other bits before, so I want some some shading around the back here to help me frame it. Um, so a few more walls that I've just noticed that might be helpful. There we go. So what I'll do is, if you go, uh, we don't need that, so let's just get rid of that with the red button. So you get rid of the panels the same way as you get rid of models, so you just hit the red button. Um, so let's come right in on him, and then I think he needs to be higher, first of all, like this. And maybe this guy actually needs to be a bit bigger. Just as I'm moving things around, I'm finding different ways to, you know, to, to 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 read the scene. And if it's just not looking right, then I can just grab these big chunks and move them without any thought to accuracy or or, or anything other than just let me align the scene like that. So we'll do what I just said, which is go to camera. And now with this, you've got this um, camera where you've got instant photo and. Uh, th th this depends on what version you're at in this because you could do this. Let me show you. And that puts it in the scene. Um, so that's called instant photo. It used to be add quad. Um, uh, but, but in this case, it's not much, much use to us. Where it is useful is this. I could take a picture of all of them in the background. And then I could, instead of having to make more geometry, I could just use that in the background. And that does help me to, um, take another one there, save on memory, because I'm not making models, I'm just making references in the background. And as you can see, if I'm there, that just gives us an extra layer for free without costing any more in, in terms of geometry. In fact, we can bring that one higher. These can be quite high, because they're just, um, there you go, just out of view, really. And you can blur them. You you could do this. Let me show you this. Um, you could use this tool, and you could just do different blurring. So you could bring the background out of focus or in focus, and you could just do that um, and take that as a, as a, as a shot. Um, uh, in fact, that's gone in the scene, so we'll delete that. Turn instant photo off. Um, and everything else is uh, we want to not show the UI this one here at the bottom so so that in fact we'll leave that blur on because that doesn't doesn't worry us at all really it just gives us some you know grays and blacks and whites but it really pops the scene but what it has highlighted is that, that the lighting's all wrong for the picture we want to take if I did want to just take the picture as it was I just hit the the fire button uh, sorry the um, not hitting the fire button it's the I think it's the B button on the, I'd have to turn it off, it's this one, the blue button. Um, the reason I couldn't see it is once you've activated it, you can't see the button on the hand. So um, that basically will, will take that picture and it'll put it into your screenshots in Gravity Sketch in your documents. So you could now just start taking shots um, and each one, you're gonna see it whiz off and that's being saved. You could try different framing options now and see if you've got it right or whether you need to do more work. Again, change that depth of field if you feel you even need that. Um, be careful with that because it can just give you kind of weird effects and make it look like toys rather than, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of what we call um, tilt shift in a camera um, where the background goes out of focus on large shots. Um, not always useful. So you can get some nice side shots. That's actually quite a powerful shot there. Something like that. But the lighting's not right, so let's go back and change that. So let's go back into settings, back up here, and let's just mess around with our different lighting scenarios. So we've got, um, uh, you could go up here and try light panels. Very, very dark, uh, very, very light, which I don't like. I could just go back and do um, HDRI is on, gradient is on, floor grid doesn't matter, shadow's at their max. Um, and let's have a look at the different settings. So I, I quite like that. Um, with a black, it gives you, you know, gives the shadows quite a dark um, uh, effect. But then move the lighting to 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 accommodate that. So maybe the lighting, if if we keep it like here from the front, we're going to get some powerful shadows going to the back. Now that might be too dark. I'm not getting enough out of the shadows there. 
Um, I'm just trying different. There we go. Black room is quite good. Uh, so it's not too dark now, which is useful. Um, I think that might be what we need. So that gives us like a a grayed out, almost like a marker effect. Um, one thing I, I did try when I was testing this is putting the um, this on. Let me show you. I'm grabbing the whole scene in the middle. Um, hang on. Just back out. And then change it to sketch so you may feel that that's helpful now I didn't so it, it's too too much like a cell shader for my liking but that could be something if you're doing vehicles and, and, and buildings this could be a way you know this could be something that works really well um, didn't work for me on this particular instance so how about just leaving the lighting like that and let's just take some final shots I will play around with this a lot before I do the draw over um, but this is pretty much how I lay the scene out ready for the final shot now It's too blown out there, so it's not it's not worked as well as I wanted so I'll go back again and I'll Have another look at that. I think the dark darker one is going to be how we do it Let's just go back. I'm just switching back and two to the different settings just to see what it looks like You can see there now. That's again probably too dark I wonder if I change the material and um, make the creature a bit more. I'll keep him grey because we're doing everything grayscale, but make him darker. Yeah, that might help a little bit. Gives you a little bit more. Yep. Yep. I think I'll live with that. Um, it's not. It's not ideal, um, but I think I can cope with it. Um, now the next thing to do is this, which is your field of view. So this is going to make a huge difference as you can see. This is really messing with the camera now. So obviously that's far too extreme. Looks cool in one way. The hands actually extended through the camera there. Look through the right the way through. So that's one thing to be careful of. So bring it back a bit from that. And let's just see what that looks like. Pull it back. Yeah, we're not too far off with that one. So we'll snap that one. And there you can see that's the kind of framing I like but maybe we tweak the field of view a bit more and pull back a bit and get that lighting up a bit and then maybe that one so that that will probably give us enough um, you've got to be careful moving this around because obviously the Sun isn't moving with the scene so this isn't part of the scene like in other programs you can attach that to the model and it stays there um, because that that would be ideal if it just if I can pick those shadows there but the minute I move the scene obviously we get we get a change so um, and I don't think you can lock it there or at least I'm not aware that you can lock it to the scene so we'll have that like that with the shadows of the the, the rocks here on the right casting in a little bit maybe even that's okay something like that okay so let's move some of these sketches over to the iPad and I'll just do a quick time lapse of how I do a draw over and a paint over and that'll give you an idea of how I set these kind of scenes up so it's almost kit bash because you're using bits of old geometry that you've just thrown together giving you the the overall framing you've used images in the scene and then you've used, uh, in my case here, we've used one, two mannequins and one uh, sculpted head from another program. So as, essentially, yes, it, it, it can be classed as kit bash, um, but if you're making your own stuff, then that's perfectly, perfectly acceptable. Okay, so let's take a look at the images that we photographed or screenshot inside of Gravity Sketch first. So we'll jump to Dropbox and we'll have a look here. And let's just navigate to the folder. So it's sort of, and it's screenshots. Now in here, we've got all of the screenshots that we took, um, and I, I took loads, and a lot of them are not gonna be any use, but that's fine, because it helped me understand and explore um, the, the, the layout of the scene. So a lot of them I will delete. I, I took about 30 or 40, I think, overall. And then out of them, I just chose the scene that works the best for me, and I saved that out ready to use. So. We switch over to Procreate. That's the one I chose, uh, and as you can see, it's it's got the it's it's a, a landscape. Uh, sorry, a portrait um, 
uh, image. It's got the hand grabbing the rock in the background, the, the, the hand coming and grabbing the protagonist down here at the front. It's got roughly enough of the protagonist to to show us um, what he's what he's doing, which is you know f you know aiming something at the at the the creature. Uh, I left I put a tail in there now because I went back and did a little bit of extra work on him. Um, now there's a few different ways that you can use this now. So you could just start with a blank screen um, like this, and you could just say, right, I'd like to put this on one side of the screen and Dropbox on the other, and maybe just work that way with, with an image on the side and use it as a pure reference. So just pick the image that you want and draw it um, over here on the side. Uh, I do do that sometimes when I'm, you know, I'm doing the initial block outs and things like that. And that's a very, uh, you know, it's a good way to just pull different bits of reference. You can use a piece of software called VizRef, which is is useful. I don't use it that much anymore. Um, I did used to have references like this, but I, I find just doing it like this or having a reference on another screen in front of me or my phone, if 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 that's the case, that's definitely one way to do it. Uh, another way is this, um, which if you turn on that reference image and then you um, go to crop, crop and resize, drag it out to the size that so, so that the grid lines that are on it equal are, are equal on both sides. And that means you've got two images side by side now within the main document. Just let it crop. And then what you can do then is, first of all, what I always do is put on a, a similar sort of colour because it's I hate a white screen, a white page. If I'm honest with you, so we'll just go rectangle, select a, um, whoops, that's my pen, select the white area, and I'll just drop in a very similar sort of grey to the one on the on the left hand side. And then what I do then is I put on if we go over here to canvas drawing guide, edit drawing guide, make the make the grid fully white so it's you can see it really well, thickness maximum, and then make the grid size about five wide, something like that. And as you notice as the grid size is changing, let's make it six, like so. Get there in a moment. And what that means is you've got six there, and that means it equals it on this side. It's a little bit out, but don't, don't worry about that. And then if you've got your grid size, this is like the old masters used to do. So now you can literally start blocking out um, exactly, you know, line for line where your reference uh, image is. So, you know, this is this here is here. So, you know, that this should be here like this. Um, and that's a great way of just just using your own design as, as a reference. Um, and having everything in the correct place as you're drawing it, so it's a great way. It's a very, very old technique. You know, it's been around for, for you know hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. So don't be afraid of using that if it's you know if you want that kind of reference. Um, what it will do is, if nothing else, it gives you a, you know an exact scale with, without you having to worry too much about where everything goes. Um, I do use this a lot in. in um, Certainly, in when I'm, where I've just got to get a job done, um, rather than me exploring and, and and having fun, I will I will do it like this, because it gives me, um, it takes away all of the need to spend time, doing the you know you know you know the um, laying out the scene and getting it right and testing it back and forward, but at least it gives me you know it, it gives me the block out in in a matter of minutes. And the results, you know, pretty much exactly, you know, size for size, it's it's exactly the same. So, um, and the way I work, you'll see it in the in the time ramp in a few minutes. Is I would do one rough layer, and then I'd make that semi-transparent, and then I'd do another layer over the top, and then I'd come in and start tightening that down. Um, and I do I do a couple of really quick passes before I sort of like set, you know, make sure that everything is actually working. Um, before I then go into doing the finals and the tight lines and the, and the really nice, you know, nice lines, which we'll show in a minute. So that's that way. And then there's this way, which is I'm going to do a time lapse now. So this is this is where you're effectively tracing your own work. So you're using your reference underneath, and what you're doing is you're using a full layout. Um, so, so you've basically already got it underneath and you're just using that as a guide. The details that are coming in are 
um, only uh, they they basically reference the stuff underneath, so you are using it as a positional um, reference. But in terms of the, the what you're actually drawing on the top, it's it's now you're doing the designing, so you're you're changing it, and all you're doing is so for example these um, fins and spines down the back, um, they weren't there. Then you know you're obviously doing all of your designing. Um, over the top of it so some people dislike this because because uh, effectively you are tracing your own work but then realistically it's it's a personal choice it's you know it depends how you feel about your your own art and whether um, w whether you want to work this way totally up to you really it's you know there's there's, there's lots of times I do do this and lots of times I don't so the you know I'm using a mannequin there so the mannequin doesn't have any of the anatomical references so you still have to know how your anatomy works you've still got to work out all of the muscles um I I, I do like it for speed because it it gets you the, the the image is down very very quickly as you can see we're you know we're halfway through this um this time lapse, uh, it, it, and this was probably only about I don't know about about 25, 30 minutes, something like that. And I'm really getting the feel for the for the design that I want. So I, you know, I, I, I like working this way with 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 Gravity Sketch and Adobe Medium as well. Um, and the the other way that I'm not showing here is is to paint the layer. So you can literally just take that layer f that, that that you've brought in from Gravity Sketch and you can paint directly onto it and do all of your smudging and blending and blurring and do it all in there now, whichever works for you whatever way that you want to design um if you want to use this in an analog way uh, which i do do uh, i'll just have this on screen and then what i'll do is i'll start working uh up by my, my images on on a canvas or on, on, a, on a sketch pad again depends completely what you want to do as you can see with the rocks there uh, the, the rocks in the background as i always said when we were modeling it they don't reflect what what we're actually going to draw now they're nothing more than a reference so as you can see they they, they gave me some framing for the for the rocks in the background but 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 nothing more than that um, and very quickly we've we've blocked out the scene we've got the because we know the perspective is correct already because we did it in VR we're, we're good to go straight into line work and then on this one I just did a pass of the the, the next darker darks um, I've got nothing really dark at this point and then I make that a bit more transparent so I'm looking at anything that's below or anything underneath has gone dark um, you can see under the chest there you can see under the you know well, I just went to the even darker then as I was talking and even darker again and you can see it building up now so and then for the final one I'm going to do a paint over of this uh, which is very very different than this so I'm actually going to paint completely um, over the top and you can see there I wanted a really nice line so I did a nice thick secondary line over the top um, and now you're completely into to, to this is and the artwork is independent now of the original um, because you've changed it so significantly um, and you, you can see that the, the 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 layout and the pose and everything that we brought from VR is all there now and it's all in place. So have a go that way if that's something that you like. Um, try you know it's, it's all about learning and finding a way to work yourself. If you feel that um, you want to go more loose and you want to just you know draw it from using it as a reference only, then you know start with the first two or three options that I showed you rather than doing the one underneath um, it's really up to you and, and your style and how you, how you want to develop your art so once we've done that we've done a line then we can start thinking about the painting side of things so here I'm using several different techniques so I'm layering over the top with multiply and I'm starting to just paint the the core what we call local colors so I did that very quickly just washed it all with red um, greys on the outsides with red coming off the character and then I started thinking about the lighting and if and if there's going to be a lot of lighting coming from the protagonist's wand then that's going to hit underneath that you know I've kind of indicated it with the, the rays of light there and then I'm just adding light on the side of the uh, the demon where the, you know coming from the lamp um, and that that really illuminates him and gives him the rim lights and the the kind of kind of this is where it comes alive really um, it, it, hopefully not with the real creature but this is where you start seeing it you know pump you know the the light hitting it now is when you actually feel like it's coming from a, a sketch to a much more realistic kind of scene I keep zooming out like this 
Um, because what I'm really trying to see is whether it works as a thumbnail um, and that's when I'm, I'm experimenting with colours now and saturation and I'm moving the hues around a little bit you can see the greens around the, the, the top here a lot of reds and yellows underneath and where the lamp's shining on it um, and then I'll just work that up over and over again until I get a, a look and a feel that, that works for me as a design I hope you're enjoying these videos. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if it's something that you like. We do drop the videos every Wednesday and a Friday and a thumbs up will get us in front of other artists who may like this kind of content. Uh, please consider subscribing and we're moving towards 7,000 subscribers now which is just mind blowing for me and I want to keep building that, uh, that, that amount of subscribers so I'd like you to be one of those please. Um, so please hit subscribe and then hit the notification and all and we can let you know when we drop those videos. So have a great week and see you soon.